where we can't stand each other. But if you get all five of us in the room together, we might start screaming and hollering. But by the time we leave that room, we're going to be crying and hugging. I believe that. I, I know that. <laughs> I love that. How did the musical Head Over Heels come about? And was Gwyneth Paltrow involved? Is that just- She was, much? yes. She was one of the early uh, believers and she put some money into it. Um, 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 Donovan Leach, you know, uh, you know who he is, Donovan? Yeah. Well, his dad's the Donovan, Mellow Yellow, Hurdy Gurdy Man, right? <laughs> um, he contacted, um, and his friend, and I can't think of his name, this is terrible. Um, I'm having a senior moment. Um, contacted us and told us about this writer, this fellow named Jeff Whitty, who had won uh, an, uh, um, what do you call it? What are the- A Broadway Tony. Words? A, a Tony, Tony for uh, Avenue Q. And he wanted to write a musical using Go-Go's music about this 17th century, like twisted love story that he came up with. And so we all started talking and, and then it was like, yes, Kathy must be involved. Let's bring her back in. Let's start, let's work it all out. We started doing shows together and getting the musical worked out in the meantime. Um, and uh, so we worked on that for years. Uh, during that process, we had to bring in someone to clean the story up and do a lot of rewriting and name, uh, a, a, a fellow named uh, James Magruder. Uh, from Baltimore, who I'm actually going to go see. I'm going to see him in a week. Um, he he made he brought the the uh, the uh, story to life. Uh, I don't think it would have worked if if Jim hadn't have been brought in. And he did a great job because I don't like musicals, but I really did like our musical. It was great, man. Amazing. It was so cool. You know, it was really cool. And it's out the bell. It's like touring all over the place now, which is really cool. See, it, it just never ends. It just keeps going. It's crazy. It never ends. What about the, and did you get a whole new group of fans too? Because I, I saw it multiple times. You know, look, there were people there for like Bonnie Mulligan and Rachel York. Like you had a oh, lot of like- Bonnie, I adore her. They, what, that, that Broadway crew oh, was incredible. Just yeah. incredible. Like I, being on the inside, okay, of a musical and really seeing how it works- Oh my God, newfound respect. Like, can't believe how these, these people do this. Singing every, singing your heart out every night like that and remembering all those lines and, you know, loving the work that they're doing, which happened to be head over heels at the time. It was quite an experience. I'm so grateful to have been involved in that. Um, and um, who was our, our uh, director was a major dude too. I can't think of his name. I don't He'll remember him. Me, excuse me. Whatever. Uh, it, it came together and it was really great. So proud of it. It was phenomenal. Talk to me about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, you know, year after year, I'm sure you were aware of just the outrage amongst people of like, why are these, why is this band not inducted? Did you feel that the same way the rest of us diehard fans yeah, felt? Yeah, it was like, why? Well, we kind of gave up after a while because we thought, oh, this is so ridiculous. And and it, guess what? I guess it always is politics at the end of the day, you know? Was it was it politics? You know, Elvis Mug, I got this in Graceland in the 80s when the band went to, we went to Graceland and we got kicked out and, they, and we were a forever banned from Graceland. Really? That's another story. Was that one of the more wild experiences that yeah, you guys have had? Yeah, we were kind of loaded and we, we, went into Graceland and we weren't as reverent as we should have been. And we were kind of getting a little too goofy, having too much fun, making fun of things like the jungle room and shit, you know? Um, and yeah, we were banned from Graceland. What happens? Anyway. Like someone that works there just comes over and says, I need the oh, five well, they, of you no, to And we had our crew with us and they were terrible too. Um, I think what, what made me lose my mind um, was when they took us to the, to the airplane, the Lisa Marie and in the back, I don't know if you've ever been there, but at the back of the plane was a huge bed. I mean, like I'd never seen a bed this big. And it had a fucking seat belt that went from one side of the bed to the other. I thought, they fucking strapping everybody in when I'm taking off on this, the biggest bed I've ever seen. It was kind of crazy. Uh, anyway, so that's, yeah, another story. We could get, go, go into that. And uh, anyway, um, 
So what are we talking about? Where we go? About the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Finally, oh yeah, we guys given gave up. up. We'd given up. And then there was a uh, a change that happened there. And um, they brought in uh, new folks that uh, that sort of, uh, I think, listened to the fans. People were, you know, I mean, after the, oh, we had that documentary that came out, Alison Elwood's documentary about the band. After that, I think it was like, People are paying attention now. Do we have your attention, folks? And um, I think we did. And then we were nominated. And uh, it was, I couldn't get over it. But we one, when we gave up and we're like, we don't give a shit. We don't care. Then we get nominated. And then we got inducted, which was that night. It, it, it's, I mean, I remember little bits here and there, but I swear I was in another world. I, I, I think I had a panic attack. The entire time I was there, because it's hard to remember stuff. I mean, I know I played three songs that night on that stage, and I played them well, but I couldn't remember any of it. I was like, in front of all those people, oh my God, in front of our peers, they're all gathered there. People are seeing us everywhere. You know, I mean, it was quite a night, you know, hanging out with Paul McCartney. Wow. I mean, it was cool. Really cool. I mean, another thing once in a lifetime event happening to me because of the Go-Go's. Being, in, being announced because, by you know, Drew Barrymore. What Barry the five Mark. of us have created together, there we are, another milestone. Um, it's big. Do you ever get starstruck? You just, you know, Drew Barrymore. I've met Drew Barrymore and we ended up talking about the Go-Go's because I just, I didn't even plan it. I had a Go-Go's t-shirt on and it just was one of those things the day I met her. And it was like, so I mean, like you're hanging out with Paul McCartney, you know, like, do you get well, starstruck? You've been in this business forever. No, here's the thing is that there were a lot of names floated around about who was going to induct us, but I'm speaking for myself. I couldn't have been happier when it was Drew because Drew was a real fan. I mean, I remember seeing that kid standing on the side of the stage years ago when we finished playing, she'd be there, you know? I mean, she really was a fan. Um, and uh, so I was overjoyed that she was going to be inducting us. And I just, I adore her. She's such a good girl. I'm so proud of who she grew up to be because she had her issues as well. You know, she went through a lot of crap and, Wow, look at her now, um, you know. Uh, so that was cool. But yes, uh, as about the stars, I'm constantly starstruck. I will always be this kid from Dundalk that is living this dream. And when I meet people, I just am like, ah, can't believe it. I'm meeting Dave Grohl or you know, whatever, whoever it may be. I'm hanging out with Questlove. Woo! I mean, you know, it's pretty cool. How did you become, because I mean, Harry Styles to me is the opposite of the Go-Go's. Like, I, I agree with you that as great as all your solo stuff is, the power is in the band. It's bigger than anything solo. Harry is maybe the opposite. And how did you